even though you're not, um, you haven't been called up, you have, you're not, uh, all you're doing is training. You're still doing that in your capacity as a service member of the United States. So that can, this constitutes active duty, even if all you're doing is, is training. Um, and it also includes the boot camp period too, because I know a lot of times they'll have that initial boot camp period and you go through that initial training that is considered active duty for training. And then after that initial boot camp, you have those weekend trainings once a month, or I know there's sometimes where you'll have a two week training period, any time where you're being called for that, it's considered active duty. So you really need to be conscious of any injury that you have during that time. Absolutely. And that can, it concludes things literally like twisting your ankle. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I tell my, my friend's husband is, is in the reserve. And I always say, if you stub your toe, you need to report it. Um, if you have headaches, you need to report that. Um, the reason being is essentially something that I think we've both learned over the course of our work here. It's made me fearful in the future every time I have an injury is even injuries that seem small in the moment, they might seem to heal or resolve. Um, if it's a certain type of injury, that's something that you're going to carry with you for the rest of your life um, that you may end up, maybe you twisted your ankle um, when you were 25, but by the time you're 40 and you've been walking on your ankle and maybe developing a little bit of a limp and compensating for the pain. Maybe it's made it easier to retwist um, and re-injure. That adds up. Let's say that you are lifting something really heavy mm -hmm. and you hurt your back. And then for the rest of the weekend, you're carrying heavy rucksacks. And then the next month, you know, it the pain went away. Uh, you didn't go and see anyone because you don't want to seem weak. And then even though you think that it healed, it comes back the next month. Mm -hmm. And then over time, I mean, you don't know what could have happened. It could have been a tear in the soft tissue, or you could have herniated a disc. Those kind of injuries can be long-term mm -hmm. and usually are not corrected without some kind of therapy or surgery. So if you have that minor injury, Sometimes it'll heal, but sometimes it won't. And as you continue to um, be physical, you're worsening it and worsening it. So it's extremely important for anything, especially things that are hard to physically see. Mm -hmm. Because let's say you injure your back um, or you twist your ankle and you have a buddy, he can see that and say, yeah, I saw him hurt his ankle and provide that cooperation. Whereas the mental health, if you're keeping it to yourself or you don't tell anyone um, or headaches, you can't mm -hmm. see a headache. Someone can see how you're going through it though. Um, that's another important way where you could prove that it happened during that time. So talking to people and staying in contact, especially if you're trying to get something um, that happened prior to, and now 10 years later, you're trying to get service connection for it because now you're, they have to have surgery for your back. It's very important to report these things during training. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, especially like we're saying with the active duty training periods, when you're not maybe on active duty for a period of, of years at a time, it's just these weekends. Just like Allison said, it's very common uh, for the VA to come back and say, well, this injury you're only training for, uh, you know, one weekend a month. Like this injury surely happened when you were doing something else. You you weren't on active duty. Um, so yeah, it's very important to, as you said, discuss, report these problems if you can. Obviously it, it can be hard. I'm sure I can't even imagine what it's like in your initial like boot camp period of training where uh, I'm sure that's very difficult to report things that happen to you. Um, but unfortunately, this is basically what the VA requires is you have to show that uh, this condition had its inception during your active duty training. Even though you don't want to seem weak, um, especially for all these young guys who are back then going in at 18, even now going in at 18, go to the infirmary, go to sick call if you have a headache, just to make sure that there's records of that. Because you never know. And this is what vets say to me all the time is that if I would have known, I would have reported it back then. So instead of banking on you um, healing, go and report any kind of injury 
whether it be physical or mental, in your active duty training Mm -hmm. periods. And I would say if you're seeing this after um, you've had an injury from from active duty training, um, try to talk to as many people as you can who knew you during that time. Um, You could always submit statements uh, from buddies who were training along with you or maybe a spouse or friend at home who saw you leave one way and come back another. Um, But that's pretty much probably about the uh, best documentation you can do if it's if it's not in your service medical records. I would say these are hard cases Mm -hmm. if it's not there. Um, And I would definitely reach out to a VSO or an attorney to get more information on it. Mm -hmm. 